we were told that Houdini family lived in the third floor. Did you hear something over there? Oh, did you? Yeah. Is it secure? Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Houdini Museum, about to go inside the yeah. exhibit. <laughs> See the haunted bust? Right over here. Maybe they must have locked him in here. Yeah. Maybe you could get down in there. <laughs> you want to try it? Sure. Oh, she actually fits. Hi. Obviously, Houdini was not as tall as I am. There's no, no way I could fit in <laughs> Okay. That says small. Small. I got the almost going. What do you get? It's a small. <laughs> you strap them up. The secret is Velcro. <laughs> Is it secure? Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Ohio, so you know. Try it. Try and escape. I can't. Do you have to dislocate your shoulder? I don't know. I don't really? Do. Okay. Well, try to lift it over your head. So somebody was saying they used, there? they used to have them for kids, and they put the kids in it, and they got so scared <laughs> it became the uh, monster of Houdini would come and get you. <laughs> we put you in a straight jacket so kids whole generation of kids are afraid of move pendant mini interesting pendant oh it's going crazy stretched so your heart rate is 105 104 so try to take some few deep breaths to lower your heart rate. Oh, good job! Wow, it's so haunting. Haunting? Hmm. Okay, is this really an old table of his or something? I don't know. Is the spirit of Houdini here today with us? Can you come to the center of the table and let us communicate with you? What's his real name? Eric, Eric Weiss. Weiss. Eric Weiss, are you here? When you were a young boy, 10 years old, the yeah. happiest time of your life, you say? You want the picture? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Harry. Now that we can visualize what you look like, um, Eric, can you please come forward and let us know you're here? Later today we're going to search for the place where you were the most happiest in different locations in your neighborhood when you were a young boy. What do you think of that? Would that be a good thing to do? Nothing's happening. Yeah. Nothing's happening. I think he likes the straight jacket better. Yeah. Well, this is a fake table, I think. Yeah. What a shot, though. Houdini's time is 120 seconds. 17, 18, 19, 20. Alright, it's your turn now. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Welcome to the Great Houdini Magic Show. I am your host, Alan, and my beautiful co-host, Anna, will be performing a trick for you. So we're going to uh, lock Anna inside this box. Notice there's nothing inside the box but Anna. But me. So there's no way Anna can escape now. She's locked in the box. No watch in the basement.
Yo, Jimmy's making you pay a price, Alan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're here at the uh, Houdini Clay Bus, and enthusiasts say that this bus is haunted. So let's see it's our handy K2. What well, we've got? Anything? Put this up here. Okay. Harry Houdini. Eric Weiss. Eric Weiss, if you are. Oh. If you are uh, somehow attached to this bus, can you please come forward and make your presence known so we can communicate with you? What do you think about the museum that was created to honor your work? Did you like it? Can you make this meter light up? What are your thoughts on spiritualism? I see people their I don't think Houdini is here today. I just thought I heard something. We'll keep looking. When in Rome. But we didn't find Harry at the museum. We're gonna keep looking through other parts of the town to see if he's still here somewhere. And find his childhood home. Then we're gonna try to find his childhood. Okay, so when I was a kid living in Appleton, uh, Dr. Playman was the dentist. He owned a house here. And we kids, we were told that Houdini family lived in the third floor for a while. So we'd go up there, it was empty kind of creepy and try and do paranormal things. So I'm going to see if I can remember, find that house. This is the house. There's We'd the go third up in that third floor. Okay. This is the house. This one here? Yeah, this is the one where we thought Houdini's family lived up there above everybody else. And we'd go up there on the third floor. Oh, wow. And do stuff. How did you get in there? Well, it was a friend of mine lived there. Oh, we were kids. Okay. okay. His dad, you know, owned this place. And they said that he family lived there. Huh. For a time. So when uh, Houdini was 30 years old, he came back to Appleton for a visit with his brother. And he ran into Edna Ferber, a famous female writer. And she, he walked her over to this building over here. We're going to look at 117. And he said, when I was a little boy, this is, this is where my dad on the second floor the rabbi would do his religious stuff. And he said, that's where I had to go to get a spanking. Now, whether he actually lived up there or not is in dispute. But clearly, he spent time up there. And it was also right around here that he said that he did his first performances, both acrobatic and, and magic. So there's no doubt that Houdini himself was standing right here as a young boy of, of 10, and then 20 years later as a man of 30. So in the 1880 census, and every 10 years America does that, it said that, that he and his, Eric Weiss and his family were living at, what was the address on Appleton Street? 114 one, 114, one, yeah. So we're right, we're right at that spot where at least he was living according to the census in 1880. So let's see if we can find 114, eh? Yeah, for sure. Now we found it. It's a building that was put up in 1870, so. Clearly he could have been living here. This is the synagogue that Houdini's dad was working and making the plans. The plans to... Here we have the temple. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is the temple that uh, Houdini's dad had laid the plans for to start building before they removed him from the office. So I'm sure they spent time, you know, looking at the site and putting together the plans for this thing. It's a, I believe it's a historical site now, not a functioning temple anymore. So it's nighttime here in Appleton, and we're uh, going to head to the uh, Zion old abandoned church. Temple. Temple. Jewish temple. 
and see if we can't make contact with oh, Houdini here. Got dark. Yeah. Oh, we'll fight. Yeah, this, this is this is the temple that his head dad helped to design. Undoubtedly, when he was here in his 30s, came back, he would have came to see what his plans, his father set in motion, what what happened to him. So I feel people have said I read that when they come here, they feel the spirit of Houdini every place in this little area that we've been traveling. That he played here as a kid and came here in the 30s. And again, this is where he said he was the happiest of his life ever. Okay, got the obvious running. Do you want to interest ahead? <laughs> Interesting. Should I put the REM pot on the stairs or something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, this isn't suspicious at all. <laughs> Through. Aren't you? Can I put that down too? If the spirit of Harry Houdini is here, can you please come forward? Or Eric Weiss. He was Eric Weiss when he was here as a young boy. His real name. Or any sp other spirits for that matter. Can you come forward and let us know you're here? It's creepy being that door. It is creepy being door. door. I expect it like, to fly open at any moment. Mm. Straight jacket ghost comes flying by. quite the temple. Wish we could get inside. Yeah, I was fascinated with you as a child. I wanted to know. I tried to contact you once when I was a kid. And some weird things happened, but I was so young that it's hard to remember. Did you hear something over there? How oh, did you? Yeah. What was it? Mm. You heard something where? In the street. Mm. Like footprints or something. Footsteps. What does blinking mean? Mm. Hmm. There's, there's some a little bit of energy there. What happens if you put it? I think this is picking up the um, there's electric. Uh, this thing's not there. going off too much though. It's it? But this, this, when it's oh. consistent like this, that usually means it's not paranormal. Move that thing over here? It's over here. It's so kind of going. heard your footsteps, can you come forward and touch this antenna and let us know you're here? It's pretty quiet. Yeah. Thoughts? Any action here? No. Not really. No, there was something like, like footsteps right behind me. When Does it sound like it was like by the street or yeah, more right like around here? here. I thought I heard something over there too, like maybe footsteps. You get any creepy feelings? Or? Yeah, I did. Huh. Or you know, like hair standing on the back of my neck kind of thing. Hmm. Are we done? Here. Yeah, should we go to the house? Yeah, let's head to the house. Okay. Phantom footsteps in the night. Yeah. People who own this house said that for a while his family lived up on the third floor. So they were pretty poor back then, right? The, the Houdini family, yeah, they, you know, they are itinerant. They don't, I don't think they owned any property or anything. So they would have to be put up, you know, by people who were 
probably moved around place to place today. So, Mr. Houdini, if you are in this house, can you come out to the front yard and interact with us in some way? It's really creepy that you can't see any lights on in the house at all. Uh -oh. It's almost like the power's been shut off. Third floor? What do you ask? Really weird. Well, if he was up there, he must have looked out. Can you feel him looking out? The young boy? Yeah. But you feel kind of creepy looking at, <laughs> looking at those windows. They're very dark. Yeah. All these houses had multiple residents back in the day. Yeah, they were like kind of duplex. You feel anything? Not really. Just that it's really creepy to look up at those windows that are all black. Census said his father and family was living in 1880. In 1880. This is supposedly where the Houdini family lived. I think it's different. <laughs> okay, so we're in the alleyway next to the what's now a bar where we believe the Houdini family used to live when it was a house. So, got lots of devices here. If indeed we need anything. Oh, there's definitely some sort of. Buy, and sell. Scam. Scam. Buy and scared. Yeah, there's some definite people? energy. There's some drunk people. Are there any Houdini family members here that you can come talk to us? If there are any spirits, can you please come forward so we might interact with you? Well, without being able to get inside some of these places, I don't know that we can actually get close enough to Houdini to interact. So I'm not, I've never used a picture before, I'm not sure um, kind of what the thought process is. Looks like he's when he was about 30, doesn't it? When he came back. So yeah. is this what you looked like when you were here, when you visited, when you were in your 30s? I got chills. You do? Yeah. There's a breeze. I feel a tingling down my spine. Mm -hmm. There's a breeze though. Yeah, but it's not a cold breeze. Tell me the word escape. No? Nothing, huh? Nothing. We didn't find Houdini. No. What did we find? We found some very interesting history and some really cool stories about a guy that was uh, very unique. Including thoughts, Dad? Yeah. Maybe he's playing with us. He's not going to reveal what lies beyond and put it past him. Maybe he's pulled the ultimate disappearing act. But you know, I think we've covered the, the place where he lived and other people have had experiences of his presence in some way. Well, he's definitely, you know, um, he's got a, he's a part of this town. Yeah. This whole section of town, matter of fact, there's a little remnants of Houdini everywhere. So just because we weren't able to make contact with the man himself doesn't mean that the spirit doesn't live here. Yeah. I thought, I thought the, the temple was probably the, felt the most there. Yeah. I think had we been able to get inside, maybe we would have had some more luck. Yep. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Hoonie.